Hello everyone, welcome to Toffee Tube. What's up? Let's talk about the 2022 Venice International Film Festival and have a look at the most iconic outfits on the red carpet. Well, red carpets are mostly dazzled with gowns as always, unless someone wears something different. Apart from being on the red carpet, in other cases, celebrities mostly appear in casual looks. And we're gonna talk about all these categories. This video belongs to the first days of Venice 22, so make sure to check the channel to be informed about the upcoming days and the styles that we're going to see. Please stay with me and watch the video till the end, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. The first one I'm gonna talk about is Alessandra Brozio that is obvious to all of us, she mostly shows up to surprises. This time she appeared on the Venice red carpet with this pinky gown from Ermanno Cervino. The ruches and the flowers embellished on the bodies are the most iconic parts of the dress. While the material seems so soft, the thigh-high slits applied at the front made it easier for her to show off its windiness feature while the train dances in the air by walking on the red carpet. The spice up to this look is the light cape acting like a train. This flower decorations on the whole ensemble are actually reminiscent of the Coperny flower dress to me. Somehow, flowers are one of the non-stop features of collections in every era. Here as well they worked. Also, this Barbie trend that we are used to seeing everywhere from celebrities is another reason not to get surprised to see it on the Venice Film Festival red carpet too. However, it's not a Valentino pink pee, pee or any hot pink shade, it again gives the vibe of the Barbie. I guess pink is the most seen color in 2022's red carpets. She kept her style monochromatic and completed it with light pink sandals. Also, her makeup is done in a pink tone. All the efforts are done to result in a perfect look for Alessandra. I'm not surprised, however. As I said, she mostly leaves us speechless with her stunning looks. The next one is Maria Carla Boscono in a whole black look from Jean-Paul Gaultier's Spring-Summer 2022 Couture Collection. Well, the whole look is controversial and I don't know where to start. The dress consists of a transparent black tool that is kind of wrapped around her body and this detail is observed with more emphasis on the upper part of the bodice. The finishing of the dress is done to a very good and acceptable level and its neatness draw attention in terms of stitching. It is very pleasant that the tool is performed asymmetrically but in the correct order. To create hard harmony with the dress, she wore black ties and thus her whole body was combined with black lace. As you see, the runway model herself is wearing a bodysuit under the tool dress so it covers the sensitive parts of the body. But Maria Carla did not. She wore a panty that literally covered her to the upper waist and exposed her breast transparently. Apart from the discussion about whether it is right to do such a thing on the red carpet of a film festival, the Venice Film Festival, to be honest, showing breast detracts from the chicness of the dress. I I can't exactly understand what the purpose was, but I'm sure it didn't add anything to the attractiveness of the dress. If this ceremony was not a film festival, or if it was held somewhere else, maybe I would change my opinion about wearing such a dress. But now, according to the review we are having, I believe that showing breasts is not right for the atmosphere of the Venice Film Festival. I even think that, was it needed at all? There are many celebrities who usually wear the runway look from head to toe as shown, and even in some cases, if those looks have any controversial items or popping ups that may cause flops in their styles according to that person's character, usually the stylists try to hide or adjust those details by keeping the original runway look, so that the person who wears the dress is not embarrassed, unless they personally prefer to show up by exposing their sensitive parts. As I said, I don't know exactly what the purpose of Maria Carlos did was, but it happened completely against what we usually expect. Maybe this act is more about ostentation and attracting attention. Who knows? Another thing that draws attention to this look is the bulge on the pants. This feature can indicate a specific reason and there is a possibility that she desired to show some support, which is admirable. However, it was still a little surprising for me. Considering her very successful style last year, it was sort of shocking for me to see such a controversial and questionable style from her. It's also clear that every effort has been made to harmonize her makeup and hair with the outfit she's wearing, which I'm a bit skeptical about. The next one is Grace Elizabeth in this simple look from Alberta Ferretti. This was a witty choice, since the style kept its balance and simplicity at its finest. The fabrics are crossing ruches at the bodies, while they are kinda tied to each other at the waist and resulting in a draping look, making the outfit so dramatic. The complex ruche detail at the bodies and the simple bottom created a perfect balance, and the combination is amazing to look at. This is another proof of the fact that simplicity always works. While the dress is strapless, she didn't neglect 
the accessory part and completed her look with this stunning diamond necklace from Crivelli. The whole look is chic, is rich, is elegant and I'm so glad to see such a successful style in the early days of the Venice Festival red carpet this year. The next one is Tessa Thompson in this whole red look from Elisab. According to all the ladies gowns on the red carpet, this one with such different details is a refresh to it. I can say wearing such an outfit is daring while admirable. The gown belongs to the fall winter 22-23 collection of Elisab. While it is kinda different from all the embellished and razzle dazzle embroidery dresses of the house, the design of such a dress doesn't contradict the main purpose of the brand. It's still drawing attention in a positive way. The outfit is a mini skirt with one shoulder detail. An additional same fabric is wrapped around her and created a hood in an asymmetrical way. This already made a sleeve image out of the dress and also made the whole result so dramatic. The long train at the back kinda completed it and also made a balance regarding both the bodies and bottom. She also paired red ties, bags and shoes with the dress. I guess she could overlook the bag. It seems kinda extra for this look. But regardless of this one, the whole package of the outfit is bold and stunning. The other daring look of this year's red carpet is from Kate Blanchett in this Caparelli Fall Winter 22 Couture look. I already made a review of this collection. If you're interested to have a look, make sure to check it on the channel. I will also put it in the description and also the card section. This ensemble also can be considered a daring outfit to wear at the Venice red carpet. The look consists of a low-waisted velvet pants with embroidered corset. Undoubtedly, the flowers embellished over the corset is the ace card of this look. All of these colorful flowers are handmade and are produced from crepe papers and tools. The high skill implementation is a proof of the high quality of the outfit. Although the diameter of the flared pants may be doubtful in some cases, but I believe it suits her. The outfit perfectly fitted to her. The next one is Barbara Palvin, as expected in an Armani dress. In my opinion, last year Barbara was one of the best dressed of the festival and most of her looks were successful. As these are the first days of the event, I personally looking forward to seeing gowns that beat the last year's. So for now, this black sequin dress that still wouldn't beat those previous ones is a good one to talk about. Most of the gowns we see at the red carpet are either strapless or long sleeves. This is a refresh to the eyes to have a short sleeve gown at the Venice Festival. The embellishments at the bodies took the simplicity of the gown and gave a classic look to it. I'm not sure what's the origin and the purpose of this embellishment. If you have any ideas, let me know about it in the comments. The most eye-catching part of her look is the wing eyeliner and the hairdo. Aside from the fact that it perfectly goes on her, it gives the vibe of East Asian vibe and I'm in love with that. The next one is Jodie Turner Smith in this denim look from Ballman. First of all, I have to confess that the fitting is perfect. There is this embellished corset at the torso with symmetrical designs. It is stitched to the halter neck like straps, while also the long sleeves are implemented this way as well and created a whole harmonized look. It's nicely fitted to her and the bottom has this dramatic train sweeping the carpet. The pleated detail of the skirt has an eye-catching harmony with the oblique embellishments of the corset. And by the way, denim is striking and so desirable. To look at. The next one is Emma Chamberlain in a vintage look from Roberto Cavalli. The bodice has this geometric design with these rhinestones embellished on it and the bottom has a slit from the middle front. It seems like the efforts are done to make everything symmetrical at its finest. But is it okay to do it at any cost? The middle front slits are mainly risky to be done and mostly doesn't suit the wearer. Also the embellishments, although they have been properly done, the placements are kinda wrong. They could be located at an upper level. At first glance, there may be nothing wrong with the design part of this dress, but when she wears it, it totally seems like her torso is too long, therefore the height seems shorter and as a result, the look seems like a flop. Frankly, I like the ruches and the embellishments. I only wish if all these aesthetics would be done at a little higher place, like at the waist, or someone else could wear it. Someone that much tall that the risky part of this design wouldn't be noticed, like Carly Claus. Guys, don't get me wrong, the design is perfect and stunning to the eye. Everything regarding the aesthetics have been perfectly done here. It's it's just a synchronizing between the dress and the wearer, you know? 
The next one is Camila Mendes in this black dress from Armani. The fabric is the first thing that catches the eye the most in this look. The embroidery is done on it, made it different, and the design also is something. The bodice is like a bare torso filled with two diverging white straps to hide the breast and create a V-form. The shoulders are accentuated with layer by layer ruffles resulting in a dramatic look. And then all these details are gathered together tied with a teeny tiny strap around the neck. The column skirt is applied to the bodies and got along with the design logic that the bodies already has. It resulted in creating cutouts at the waist and it worked very well. The texture of the fabric as I said is unique and is a spice up for this look. The balance has been kept and everything regarding this outfit is acceptable. Last but not least is Georgina Rodriguez in this simple black dress from Jenny. As she is one of those ladies who mostly shows up on red carpets with high slit dresses since she has nice legs and stuff, this time again she showed up in a such featured dress. The length of the dress is shorter than is usually expected. I'd rather it had a longer length, so there were a train and stuff. The way that she completed the dress with such sandals created a casual like style. Somehow it's different and a new style from Georgina. We always appreciate daring ideas. This one also is acceptable and is not hurting the eyes. As I mentioned earlier, the dress is a simple black gown while the most iconic part of it is the gold white neckline attached to it. The neckline has some gold strap like features draping from it and spicing up the look mostly on the backside. It seems like an embellished dress and accessory at the same time. The whole look is acceptable except for the hairdo. I wish the hair was left loose or had another style. Although as is told it's an inspiration from Audrey Hepburn, mm -hmm. the imitation was not successful and didn't give the vibe. This one kind of made a different image out of her. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd be so glad to know what is your opinion. Did you like these outfits or not? Please let me know in the comments. Stay notified, I'll be back with further reviews of the Venice Film Festival outfits. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. So, see you soon.